Yo, is let's do this. Color. It's omnipresent. Color is a huge business. Advertising people believe as much as 80% of all buying decisions is based around color. We use color to recognize tasty from terrible and friend from foe. We use color in almost every aspect of our life. But what is color really? And maybe the strangest part of all about color is there's every chance that the color as we imagine it doesn't exist at all. It's something we create in our minds. The cognitive research has gone back and forth, but it's clear with color. Much of what we take for granted just isn't true, and color is extraordinarily context-specific, and what we think of as being different colors are point of fact the same, and you can see from this illusion here. Focus on the black dot. Do you see green dots or magenta? If you see green ones, then your mind is making them. They don't exist in reality. And don't get me started on magenta. The story we're told in school of prisms and rainbows and color as only spectrum of light that is absorbed or uh, emitted turns out to be, well, the cliff note version. Things are a lot more complicated inside our brains. Magenta is composed of light from the opposite sides of the spectrum. And while light has no trouble going smoothly in, in a linear fashion, our mind makes it loop around and joins magenta with both the red and blue of the extreme ends of the light spectrum. Magenta isn't the only extraspectral color. There are many others. Uh, cognitive scientists have had some luck with getting us to see impossible colors. Like Jasper Jones encourages us to question our ideas about color in his famous false start. As babies, color is a right brain activity. And as we age, it becomes a left brain activity associated with language, so much so so much associated with language that there are actual differences between people who speak languages with finer grain names for different colors. Like between English and Russian, Russian language speakers were able to make finer grain distinctions more quickly than those English speakers, even when the task specifically did not involve linguistic elements. This advantage only held in blue where in the Russian language, there are two words that you're forced to choose from when talking about blue. There's no getting around. Languages vary in how many colors there are. As two, and as many as 12. And people vary on their cognition of colors and their recognition of fine grain differences. And scientists, philosophers, and artists have gone back and forth about what that means. But to me, the most interesting finding that I've seen is that if you learn a new color distinction, there will actually be changes in your brain, even among adults. The artist and great color theorist Joseph Albers was famous for beginning his lectures by asking everyone to imagine the color red of a Coca-Cola can. And then he said that you could ask 50 people the color of Coca-Cola can and you would get 50 reds no one would be able to tell you which was which, and that even those with highly developed color sense had very poor color memory, even though most people can remember a tune and whistle it after very few hearings, even without musical training. When Coke came out with his Coke can uh, on the right that's all white, there were people who actually called in and said that they had changed the formula. Did the Coke taste differently? And in fact, much of taste comes from our sight. There seem to be some quality to color that depasses our sight. And Albert's was very conscious of it, and you can see it in his work and in the relentless experimentation over his lifetime career. 
the strange paradoxes of color, filled him with wonderment and delight, and a strong belief that I share that color is ultimately about experimentation, not necessarily about theory. It's more than linguistics. Color is permeable, and these two reds appear to be quite different, and this skin appears not to be gray, but to grow pink, and reminds me of Delacroix saying that he could make mud look like a Venus's skin if he could choose the colors to put around it. I hope all of these illusions, all these tricks, have convinced you to think about color as light. The color is a whole experience, not a sliver of the spectrum, or a hexadecimal value, or a color scheme from a book, but an experience. This is a bit of a pilgrimage. You don't get to Rhone Crater, you know, just by getting on a bus. It's uh, it's a lifetime's project. In fact, he says it's like writing the great American novel. And it's still unfinished. And yet, in pursuit of his goal, he still managed to write a series of short stories, he calls them. His experiments, his sky spaces around the country, around the world. Sky space. Here we are in the James Terrell sky space. We're a few minutes early, but stick around and you'll see something quite amazing. Terrell's sky spaces are beautiful and baffling. The eye loses its bearings, trying to balance the light as it changes inside and out. People are absolutely blown away. Almost everyone that sees it, they're, they're confused, they're not sure what they're looking at, but at the end of the show, Everyone starts clapping. <laughs> it's hard to believe that we're looking at the sky and there's nothing in between us. And our eyes are doing things that we didn't think was possible, but that's what's going on. I, I was fascinated with light and... Uh... I mean, we drink light as vitamin D to the skin. We photosynthesize light into vitamin D. So we're light eaters. It's part of our diet. <laughs> Coming into the bowl of the crater, into the celestial vault. Yeah. The rim of Roden Crater has been painstakingly landscaped by teams of workers using bulldozers and earth movers. More than a million cubic yards of volcanic material were shifted to create a phenomenon that Terrell calls shaping the sky. As you say, it's, well, it's exactly, well, it, it feels like this arch above my head. It's completely reversed what, we're, what we were looking at. This is the articulate presenter from England. Right? <laughs> well, if I was a bit tongue-tied, it's because some of the things revealed by James Terrell are beyond words. Terrell's temple teaches one fundamental, profound truth. Perception is like a toolbox, and we each use it to manufacture our own reality. 
we form the shape of the sky. This quality of always feeling that we're receiving everything as opposed to, we're, as opposed to the fact that we're part of yes. the constructing or building that reality in which we live so that that which we behold is something that we actually create.